Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Florida got f Lion Kamala. Nike hates you if you're white and a woman. <laughs> Lock it in, TGIF, boom. What's going on, Hurricane Milton? Let's see what it looked like. It hit, but what did it look like from space? This is what people want to see. Check it out. Look at the size of that. So at that stage, it was a category five. Uh, right before landfall, it uh, was reduced to a category four and upon landfall category three so basically just stating that it wasn't as severe as it could have been but uh yeah it was bad for sure 100 percent so what exactly happened uh governor DeSantis got the message and he went ahead and got those prison inmates uh to build some sandbags for hurricane milton just as wyoming has inmates fighting the wildfire all right boom check it out guys never embarrassed to be seen with you in public so save money by bundling your voter RV insurance with Home or Auto from Progressive. And buy more happiness or something close to it. <laughs> the commercial on the dude's radio is hilarious. Anyway, uh, yeah, so great. That's what you should be doing. You should be using inmates for these things. Well, those wildfires in Wyoming, check it out. Good Lord. Not sure if the elk know exactly what they're doing. Looks like they're running into the fire. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. So what else is next? Did Ron DeSantis do anything about it? All right, let's have a look. Uh, this is not going to be an opportunity uh, for folks to take advantage uh, of people. Uh, if you think you're going to go in and loot, you got another thing coming. You go into somebody's house after the storm passes, think that, that you're going to be able to, uh, to commit crimes. Uh, you're going to get in, in really serious trouble. And quite frankly, you don't know what's behind that door in a Second Amendment state. So uh, do not try to take advantage uh, of people uh, who are suffering because of the results of this storm. That goes for Helene continually. But then, of course, that will be the case of, uh, for Milton. I know we've already uh, brought a lot of people, held people accountable. Uh, in post Helene, um, we will be very swift across all levels of government uh, to throw the book at people. And of course, uh, when you make these bad decisions, you're opening yourself up uh, to response from property owners who may be inside that house. Yeah, armed, right? So that's the thing. Minneapolis or Minnesota, they just, uh, the Supreme Court came out and said uh, that uh, you should have a reasonable. Um, thought to leave if someone's trying to kill you before killing them if you're being assaulted or robbed or whatever and you have a reasonable opportunity to flee they say that's not what you should do and if you don't you could be charged with a murder kind of like canada someone breaks into your house in canada and they have a knife and they come at you with the knife and you shoot them then I believe that you can, at that point, potentially get charged with murder or some sort of, like, homicide. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, storm scare terrifying alligator warning as Hurricane Milton to spark surge in sightings with beasts holding breath for hours. Experts warn Hurricane Milton could be one of the most destructive storms on record. Devastating flooding caused by Hurricane Milton could bring another danger to affected people. Alligators, a wildlife expert, warned about the deadly creatures being carried miles by rushing floodwaters just before the storm made landfall. I mean, terrifying. It's bad enough that you could have... Uh, <clears throat> here's a gentleman with an alligator. Bad enough you could lose your home. But imagine arriving and uh, there's gators in there. 
My God. Well, it happened to these people. They're stocking homes in flood water after a catastrophic Hurricane Milton barreled through Florida. This is the shocking moment Florida residents caught in Hurricane Milton opened their car door to find an agitated alligator snapping at the tire. Locals were left hysterical as their car became swamped in fast-moving water and attacked by a big f***ing alligator. Wildlife experts warned that animals may be affected by the storms and driven into populated areas left disoriented and more aggressive from the stress. Absolutely, and hungry. There's a grainy image there of uh, an alligator. Video appeared to show an alligator snapping at a car tire. Yeah, so I guess as they pulled in, I don't know what's going on. These pictures are like from uh, the worst camera of all time. Okay, whatever. Gators in the water. If you're down in Florida, look out. Michigan woman eaten by shark on vacation in Indonesia. The ocean's not safe. While the remains of Colleen Monfort, we pray for her soul, were found in the belly of a shark after she disappeared during a dive excursion in Indonesia on September 26th, her loved ones don't believe the shark killed her. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Colleen Monfort, 68, was traveling in Indonesia with friends when she disappeared after being separated from her group during a September 26th diving excursion, only for her remains to be found within the belly of a shark two weeks later. Friend of the family, Rick Sass, confirmed to the New York Post. According to Rick, authorities were able to match fingerprints on the remains to those of Colleen. But while it was suspected that the Michigan woman may have been killed by the shark, Colleen's friends and loved ones, including her husband Mike and Rick, believed she suffered a medical issue while in the water. Okay. Fair enough. It's unclear whether Colleen had any medical conditions prior to the dive, and her cause of death has not been confirmed. <clears throat> Speculation. They don't want to believe that she was, because it's gruesome. They would rather believe that she died peacefully, not that she was devoured by a shark while, like, trying to escape. So, you know, very unfortunate there. Are taxis safer with no driver? I mean, maybe. Well, these women think so. Some women say they prefer taking driverless taxis because they don't have to deal with safety concerns they have about human drivers. I mean, yeah, definitely in certain areas, countries. Autonomous taxis are winning over women in cities like San Francisco by offering an answer to a long-standing concern about ride-hailing apps, misbehaving <clears throat> human drivers, especially men. Some women said in interviews that they'd mostly stopped using Uber and Lyft, the two most popular ride-hailing apps, and switched instead to a driverless competitor, Waymo. At least in part because they don't have to share physical space with an unfamiliar man behind the wheel. In autonomous taxis, software drives the car with no other human present. Yeah, we've seen it. Uh, Amazon's got these on the go now, too. Uh, Tesla just unveiled yesterday. Uh, yeah, so good for these women. I mean, like, if if it works, I would rather not have a human driver either. I don't know. Maybe I would. Doesn't matter. Like, sometimes I don't like talking to them. I don't know who most people do. It's okay. I don't mind if he's like, hey, so how's this or that? But, like, you know, if I give a curt response, then you know, he should have the social, you know, prowess to know, to shh his mouth and let me listen to my, especially if I got headphones in. That's the other thing, like, have a social cue and understand if someone's wearing headphones and they take it out, but like, it, they're anticipating putting it back in, figure it out. <clears throat> should be able to figure it out. Tesla's hyped robo-taxi event was a massive disappointment, investors say. I don't think Elon said much about anything. There he is, Dark Maga. For 10 years now, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has promised a fully self-driving car, but despite his many reassurances that an autonomous car would be reality next year, the company still doesn't have a lot to show. On Thursday, the EV maker held its long-awaited RoboTaxi event, showing off a prototype of its CyberCab, uh, RoboVan as well, which will allegedly go into production in 2026 and cost under $30,000. Musk also showed off a separate robo-van that can carry up to 20 passengers. A prototype cyber cab, a flashy two-seater with no steering wheel or pedals, was seen navigating some mocked-up streets at the event that ironically took place inside a Hollywood movie studio. But the flashy presentation left plenty of glaring questions unanswered. For one, the company didn't show off the long way to Model 2, a rumored $25,000 passenger vehicle that shareholders have said could help the company boost sales. Yeah, it's on the back burner. They already said that, like... He's focused on this robo-taxi. He was over in China talking about it. He wants the robo-taxi because he's already way behind on it. 
As many analysts predicted, the company didn't get into the details. There was no discussion, for instance, about when said robotaxi could go on sale or how long it would take for Tesla to establish a service that can compete with the likes of the autonomous taxi Waymo, which maintains a significant lead over the Musk-led car maker. Absolutely. Yeah, so we'll see. And his stock went... It was down like 9%. Uh, <clears throat> they were made without eggs or sperm. Are they human? Ooh, I'd say, yeah, they are of the uh, Homo sapien species, but they have a soul? Like, did they get that God spark? I don't know. Embryo models are getting remarkably realistic. Take this with a grain of salt as well. It's the Atlantic. The little clump of cells looked almost like a human embryo created from stem cells without eggs, sperm, or womb. The embryo model had a yolk sac and a protein placenta resembling a state that real human embryos reach after approximately 14 days of development. It even secreted hormones that turned a drugstore pregnancy test positive. <clears throat> to Jacob Hanna's expert eye, the model wasn't perfect. More like a rough sketch. It had no chance of de the developing into an actual baby. But in 2022, when two students burst into his office and dragged him into a microscope to show him a cluster of cells, he knew his team had unlocked a door to understanding the crucial stage of human development. Hanna, a professor at the Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel, also knew, interesting, knew that model would raise some profound ethical questions. Absolutely. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Why are you trying to create humans from cells, like in a dish? Like, what is the purpose of that? Why are you trying to harness creator, the, the power of God? You might recall images of embryonic development from your high school biology textbook. In a predictable progression, a fertilized egg morphs into a ball of cells, then a bean-shaped blob, and then ultimately something that looks like a baby. Like, th th like this person does not have children. Anyway, whatever. Embryo models. That is, embryos created using stem cells could provide a real alternative for studying some of the hardest problems in human development, unlocking crucial details, let's say. So this person is a, a proponent of growing these cells into human or humanoids and then uh, experimenting on them. All right, what does this guy say? Around the 14th day of embryonic development, a key stage in human growth called gastrulation kicks off. Cells begin to organize into layers that form the early buds of organs. This is life. That's life. That's when it begins. You know, I say it begins at the spark, like as soon as it divides. But this is it. This is, it's developing into a human. That is life, right? Primitive streak, a developmental precursor of the spine shows up. Boom. It is also at that point that an embryo can no longer become a twin. You become an individual. So you're, you're alive. There it is. Professor of Bioethics and Medicine at the John Hopkins Berman Institute of Bioethics. That's what they told Jeremy Sugarman. The primitive streak is the main rational behind what is often referred to as the 14-day rule. <clears throat> it's got a spine. It's alive. It's a vertebrate. Anyway, whatever. They're probably going to grow these things in tubes and experiment on them and not tell anyone. They're probably already doing it. Democrats start to hit the panic button. Harris's dilemma, criticize Biden or set her own agenda. Yeah, she should have, she, like, Biden's done. He's a corpse. He's, he literally is. He's not providing anything of value to anybody. She should have buried him. She shouldn't, she should have said, thanks, Joe, but this is the end of the run, end of the line. You know what I mean? And there's a noose on it. And we wrapped it around your neck. Two months ago, even a month ago, they were feeling bullish about Vice President Harris, Harris's prospects of defeating former President Trump. But now, with less than a month to go until Election Day, they're increasingly worried about a number of issues plaguing the Democratic nominee's campaign. On Tuesday, there was a grumbling from some Democrats about the Vice President's interview on CBS 60 Minutes, which they altered. There's also concern on everything from the static poll numbers in the race <clears throat> to Vice President's messaging and even her standing with men, not just white men, but black and Hispanic men, too. Interesting. Some of the of this perhaps can be chalked up to normal democratic nerves ahead of what looks like it could be among the closest presidential elections in history. Either way, it's nerve-wracking for Democrats. A lot of people are saying like, nah, the divide is way larger than it is. Polling in 2016, 2020 was way off. Um, so if that's what they're using, it's not really gonna be that close. A lot of people are saying they're they're using this, this uh, verbiage to set up a steal. I don't know. I don't want to go to jail because apparently you can't say that the election was stolen or they'll, they will investigate you, not that 
there was any evidence of election fraud. Not even a little bit. Nothing. 10,000 mules. Everything is deadlocked and the composition of the electorate is unknowable and there are so many things that are unprecedented, said Democratic strategist Jamal Simmons, who served as Harris's communication director until last year. We can't look back at any level of security because we haven't had an African-American woman on the ticket. <clears throat> She's not African-American. She's Indian. An Indo- Af like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Jamaican-American? Hardly. So it's just hard to know, he explained. If you're not nervous, you're not paying attention. Yeah. So uh, if you are paying attention, Nate Silver, he's predicted like almost every election correctly forever. First said it was going to be uh, Trump. And then he said, ooh, it's close. It's like, it, could, it could be Harris. And everyone's like, what's he talking about? He's flip-flopping. So he has some sort of model he's developed where he puts data into it. And it it's shooting out an answer to him. And he's saying it's going to be close right up until election. I've never seen an election in which the forecast spent more time in the vicinity of 50-50, and it probably never will, because he's that confident in his model. Uh, he argued that there were a few instances where it seemed like the election was swinging one direction, but they proved to be false starts. Silver pointed to when Harris replaced President Biden at the top of the Democratic ticket. Rah, rah, everyone was like, yeah, but they, it got shut down because she, everyone's realizing she's a fraudster. She's an absolute huckster. She can't speak without a teleprompter, except on the Call Her Daddy podcast, where all they talked about was blowjobs and anal. The debate came at this moment, however, and Harris won and reestablished. Yes, yes, she certainly won the debate. Uh, what's been a consistent lead of about three points in national polls, close enough where the Electoral College is roughly 50-50 or maybe a slight Harris edge. So it doesn't. there's popular vote, and then there's the Electoral College. And, and the Electoral College is there, so smaller states can't get front run by the bigger states and you know what i mean it gives them an ability to have uh their vote count with extremely few undecided voters harris and trump combined for a 95.5 percent of the vote in our national average and third party typically get another one to two percent yeah so if they keep kennedy on the ballot in some states which is absolutely stupid sports analogies fall into elections the final score all right whatever <clears throat> This is it, poly markets. This is the real deal. This is what humans, the gamblers, the betters, the um, the market makers, <clears throat> they are stating that Harris is way behind, 44.2% possibility of winning, and Trump sitting large with 552 And here's the map. Just look at it. Like, East Coast blue, West Coast blue, Central, Southern, all red, baby. And I can see a couple of these eastern ones potentially flipping as well. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, not looking good for Harris. Let's see what Donald has to say. I won the last two debates, one with Crooked Joe, the other with Lion Kamala. I accepted the Fox News invitation to debate Kamala on September 4th, but she turned it down. J.D. Vance easily won his debate with Tampon Tim Wallace, who called himself a knucklehead. I'm also leading in the polls with the lead getting bigger by the day and leading in all swing states. The first thing a prize fighter does when he loses a fight is say that he demands a rematch. It is very late in the process. Voting has already begun. There will be no rematch. Besides, Kamala stated clearly yesterday that she would not do anything different than Joe Biden. So there's nothing to debate. Thank you for your attention to this matter, Donald J. Trump. And like literally just like owning her. It's, that's not debatable. Kamala Harris's husband, Doug Emhoff, faces explosive new allegations from his time atop L.A. law firm. Okay, so he's an adulterer who forced his mistress to have an abortion. He beat up his girlfriend at the film festival. Now what? He was inappropriate and misogynistic at work, his former colleagues uh, tell DailyMail.com. Attorneys who worked with Doug Emhoff at his firm uh, Venable say he yelled expletives, swear words, curse words, held a men-only cocktail hour in the office, revoked work perks for women who didn't flirt with him, and took only young, attractive associates in a limousine to a ball. What kind of things do you say? 2019 lawsuit also claimed sex discrimination by other partners in the L.A. office. Emhoff ran, and while engaged to Harris, he hired an unqualified part-time model as a legal secretary because she was young, attractive, and friendly with the powerful men in the office. The claims are the latest in a string of allegations revealed by DailyMail.com that threatened to shatter Emhoff's image. And uh, Jen Psaki, 
Pasaki, she came out and he was like, you're redefining masculinity. Like, literally, like, vomit. Like, he's not a man. He's, well, he acts like a man from, like, 50, 75 years ago and does whatever he wants. He doesn't care about his wife or women. Not a feminist, not a feminist ally and not a wife guy. Cheated on his first wife, got his daughter's grade school teacher, uh, nanny pregnant. Crazy. Beat up his uh, girlfriend in cons. He admitted to the affair after the story broke. After last week, we went uncovered claims that he struck his ex-girlfriend in 2012. Four days after, contacted Emma for comment. Spokesperson reportedly denied the allegations as untrue. Neither he nor the White House have commented. One senior former staff claimed Emhoff bragged about yelling, get the f out of my office, to a female partner at the firm, later telling his top male colleagues that he had put her in her place. Yeah, man. Hey, boys, I told her to get the f out. <laughs> yeah, I also beat up my girlfriend and impregnated my nanny. And you know what? No, baby. Anyway, Megan Kelly has words for uh, Kamala. Don't skip the ending. All right, let's hear what she's got to say. if the host cares anything anything about issues affecting women other than abortion like does she care that kamala harris and joe biden have changed title nine with the stroke of their pen and that trump has promised to reverse that that trump has promised to remove men and boys from women's private spaces where they are being hurt all the time do you care or is it all about killing the baby mm. in utero i just wonder because as a woman I, I care about a lot of things I, I care about <clears throat> where the country is on abortion rights. I think it's an interesting topic. But I really care about what happens to the women once they are born and live their lives. The young girls don't want a bunch of penises coming at them in their locker room. Fact. Okay? That's, that's the business that you're in, talking about all the times you've been on the receiving end of one. But I don't want it happening to my 13-year-old while she's trying to play soccer. You get that? Totally. 100%. I get it. And she's 100% correct. Well, what has Obama got to say? You hear that? <clears throat> Pardon me. The brothers. Okay? He's talking about the black community. No one cares about Kamala. She's not black. She's fake black. Comedian Eddie Griffin. Uh, let's see what he, his take on it. Check it out. Carlyne Harris. Carlyne Harris. Look at This woman wanted to play black so bad, she went and, and, and erased her grandmama and replaced her grandmama. As you can see there, it says that she died in July of 1960. And so this is a huge scandal. And her fake grandmama is, is this black woman who died four years before she was born. But in her book, she got a picture standing next to this dead woman with a smile on her face. I wonder how that happened. Grandma Farrell died in 1960, four years before Kamala Harris was born. And you gonna deny your real grandmama uh, uh, being up showing up at your inauguration if you happen to get elected, which ain't gonna happen. Everybody I talk to you, don't, don't like it. Ain't nobody gonna vote for you. Here's your choices, America. You liar! Or the crook. I think I might be going with the crook, <coughs> Yeah, the crook, the crook, he's, he's, he's got a lot of, yeah, you know, he got three baby mamas, 43 felony cases, and count, selling high top tennis shoes, just like Michael Jordan, got shot, just like Tupac, the mother gonna drop her out next, we'll be right back. Beautiful, like how funny is that? Absolutely hilarious. All right, well, 
Uh, let's see what's going on. Netanyahu over there just bombing everybody. Israel killed Nasrallah's replacement and his replacement's replacement. <laughs> yeah, they're going deep. Uh, PM presumably referring to Hashem Safidin, targeted in raid last week through neither Hezbollah nor IDF have said he's dead, urges Lebanese to free your country from Hezbollah. Yeah. These people are terrorists. Absolute terrorists. Uh, today Hezbollah is weaker than it has been in many, many years, said the Premier. Netanyahu did not ident identify by name any of the successors he had uh, been killed although Safadin had been widely considered to be the next in line for the position of Secretary General. Yeah, so what are you going to do? You keep chopping the head off the snake, and the snake eventually will die, I guess. All right, uh, exclusive. Transgender coach at Pennsylvania High School who was previously accused of undressing in front of teen girls resigns after starring in porn while smoking meth. Yikes. Transgender sports coach has quietly resigned from a Gettysburg, Pennsylvania high school, leaving some members of the community scrambling for answers. Redux has now learned that Sasha Yates was found starring in pornography while smoking methamphetamine and has now been reported to the statewide Child Protective Services program for undressing in front of teen girls in their locker room. Good lord. As previously reported by Redux last year, Yates had initially been hired by Gettysburg Area School District in 2018 while still identifying as a male, but in 2022, he began using the name Sasha after he declared that he was transgender. Yates has three children, two of which appear to live in the United Kingdom with their mother and one young daughter who lives with him in Pennsylvania. In the fall of 2022, shortly after Yates began identifying as female and using women's facilities, he stripped down to a bra and panties in the girls' locker room where the teen soccer team was changing. While in the locker room, Yates questioned the young girls on their menstrual cycles and what type of panties they like to wear. The girls later reported that they were able to see Yates was still intact, indicating his penis was visible. The incident first came to public attention after Gettysburg Area School District Board member Michelle Smyers reviewed internal documents related to Yates' use of the girls' restrooms and locker rooms. Absolutely should be reviewed. Well done, Smyers. In response to the public outcry, the district quietly hired an attorney to do an investigation into allegations that Yates had exposed himself to the female students. The attorney, Christopher Harris, determined that the allegations were unsubstantiated despite never interviewing the girls who had reported seeing Yates' genitals. Case closed. Now let's go to that weird fetish bar. Sick. Utah State fourth women's volleyball team to cancel versus SJSU. Yeah, we reported on team there last week. They pulled, the coach was like, yeah, we're not doing it. We don't want to injure our team, and we think this is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the Aggies announced Wednesday the decision to forfeit their October 23rd Mountain West Conference match. Boise State already forfeited its match on September 28th against the Spartans, and Wyoming followed suit this week. Awesome. Announcing the match slated for Saturday was now a 3-0 forfeit win for San Jose State. So they're seeing running on the wall. You know, if Trump gets in, all this is just going to get just done in. Here we go. Uh, breaking former chairman of the Jay County Democratic Party in Indiana arrested and charged for inappropriate conduct in front of minors. Another. Joel Bowers, who is also a teacher, allegedly mm, 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 in front of students in the classroom and sent photos of his wiener diener, someone who said they were 15 years old. Yikes. And look at this super awful looking individual there with a turtleneck, it looks like, and a beard, and a male pattern baldness. This keeps happening. It's time to have serious talk about Democrats' disgustingly inappropriate attraction to minors. Absolutely. Maps. That's what they're trying to call themselves now. Cops arrest six children, ages uh, just 11 to 14, after three armed robberies, two crashes on Interstate Highway. What is going on? Minneapolis. Yeah, so Tim Walsh is, uh, can't control his state. Minneapolis police said they arrested six children, three males, age 11, 12, and 13, and three females, age 12 and 14 year old. Tuesday, after three armed robberies and a pair of crashes on Interstate 94, the station said police responded to uh, armed robbery call on the 5100 block of 41st Avenue South and second armed robbery on the 3400 block of Bloomington. Whatever. Shots fired at the victim from one of the involved vehicles in the second armed robbery. Due to the three robbery similarities, law enforcement from multiple agencies, including Minneapolis, the Hennepin County, 911 calls. Okay, quickly apprehended four individuals. Are they going to state what they look like? Uh, juveniles, three males. Okay, three females, got them. What about uh, nationality? Were they migrants? Were they white, Chinese, Spanish, Hispanic, or, or what? Or were they BIPOC? Black interracial 
people of color. That's what it is. But they're not going to mention. Of course they won't because it's not not good to mention that. All right, let's see what's going on. Uh, Here's a bunch of young girls just going to stand up to the established uh, company and say, you know what, we're sick of it. Dear Nike. Dear Nike. Dear Nike. Why won't you stand up for me? Why won't you stand up for me? Why won't you? Why do you claim to support women and girls? Yet when we need you most, you remain silent. Today, males are claiming our identity. Our sports. Our spaces. Men and boys are stealing opportunities. Medals. Trophies. And our future. It is not fair. Or just. In fact, it's often dangerous. Yet you refuse to use your platform to stand up. You say you're for social justice and progress. So why do you allow men's rights to come before ours? See, with a big platform comes an even bigger responsibility. You have a chance to do the right thing, not just do the easy thing. So we're asking you, Nike. So we're asking you, Nike. So we're asking you, Nike. As the biggest voice in all of sports. Will you stand up for me? 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 Will you? Will you? Will you just do it? Awesome. And how does Nike respond? Today I have a presentation on dynasties. But I refuse to talk about the ancient history and drama. That's just the patriarchy. Instead, I'm gonna talk about a dynasty that I actually look up to. An all-women dynasty. Women of color. Gay women. Women who fight for social justice. Women with a jump shot. A dynasty that makes your favorite men's basketball, football, and baseball teams look like amateurs. A dynasty with fire braids. A dynasty with sick style. A dynasty with crazy dimes. A dynasty that makes Alexander the Great look like Alexander the Great. Okay. The dynasty that's been reigning for the past 25 years. Undefeated since 96. The USA basketball women's national team. Seven-time consecutive gold medalist. And most importantly... Women that made it possible for girls like me to feel like they can be a part of whatever dynasty they want. The greatest dynasty ever. There you have it. That's how um, Nike responds. And they're just like, you know what? Black women only. And black gay women even better. All right, uh, this is our story. We're going to wrap it up. TGIF, breast milk for adults, wellness elixir, or unscientific fascination, or the most perverted thing of all time. Researchers have found more promising ways uh, the infant food can benefit health, aside from being a nutritional supplement and supposed hangover cure. People have used breast milk for reasons other than feeding babies for a very long time. In the first century, Pliny the Elder recommended it for fever, gout, and healing from poisonous beetles. In the 17th and 18th century, England and America, breast milk was prescribed for ailments ranging from consumption to blindness. Today is still more than just infant food, though some of us uses are more evidence-based than others. Historically, the mammary gland has been highly understudied and underappreciated, says Lars Bode, a professor and founding director of the Human Milk Institute at University of California, San Diego. No surprise, it's in California. There is a stigma around breast milk. The American Academy of Pediatrics observed that mothers in the United States who breastfeed beyond a year often report feeling ridiculed and alienated because of it. There is still much we don't know about human milk. Now researchers are trying to close the knowledge gap. Human milk is not made for adults, but that doesn't mean there can't be potential benefits of certain components of it. Yeah, and you know what they'll do? They'll grow the uh, humans in uh with the cells in the petri dish and then they'll impregnate them with sperm cells and then they'll extract the breast milk and you'll see it on your countertops uh 2035 approximately sigma tiger signing out tgif